Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're gonna to talk about how to minimize supports. Most of the objects that really bring out the best of 3D printing require support material in some way. Some printers come equipped with a secondary extruder that can be used for PVA or ionic hybrid support material, which can both be washed away with water after the print is finished. Others don't have that, instead have to rely on the same nozzle for both the build material and the support material. The techniques in this video should help you create your 3D prints quicker by minimizing how much support material is actually needed to be printed and by minimizing the post-processing time needed to break them off. Sometimes though, it is going to be unavoidable and you will need to print with support material. And in that case, I suggest optimizing your support settings, which we have discussed in some previous videos, which we will link down below. In any case, let's jump right into this. When designing 3D models for 3D printing, it's important to consider which method of 3D printing you're using. FFF 3D printers generally require a gentler overhang than SLA or SLS 3D printing with an overhang of about 70 degrees being possible by many printers, while others seem to struggle with 45 degrees. It all depends on the exact printer. As most users will be working with an FFF 3D printer, 45 degree overhangs is a good place to work around. For example, let's say I'm designing a part that needs to be mounted to aluminum extrusion with T-slot channels. For the uninitiated, T-slot allows you to mount hardware after assembly instead of in the middle, which is why a lot of inexpensive printer kits feature them in some way. A small tab can help align the part onto the extrusion, but with a flat bottom this is going to droop. While it won't be pretty, at least it doesn't affect the structure of the part enough to warrant a reprint. Instead, add a chamfer to the bottom until the horizontal surface is gone, or at least significantly minimized. This also works well for any holes in the print, like for bolt holes. Instead of making holes perfectly circular, a teardrop shape will help print much better unsupported and allow for bolts to be inserted much easier and cleaner. Depending on the use of a finished 3D print, it can be helpful to have hidden joints or bolt holes that can help hold all the parts together. Of course, there are times when you can't do that and you still need to print it with support material, but for things like jigs, fixtures, or demonstration models where it doesn't really matter if there's bolts or glue joints all over it, it can make it a lot easier to print in several pieces. This E3D hot end model is something I made in my free time, just as an experiment of following someone else's technical drawings to create a 3D model. This model isn't intended to do any more than show the different working parts of an E3D hot end. So it's not important that it has structural integrity, it just needs to look good and be able to explain the different parts of it. In this case, the E3D hot end has fins on the heat sink to help dissipate heat. The best way to print these for the good finish would be vertically, so you'd have all the fins have a nice clean edge here, but in doing so, the underside of the fins are going to have some rough textures, and it's gonna be difficult to get support out of each individual fin. Really, there's two ways to split and print this without support. Straight down the middle vertically, which would have a very obvious seam and some stepping due to the print orientation, or it could split it into over a dozen different rings that slot together and glue to make one clean finished part. I did the latter. You can see that it has a clean finish on all the sides, and with the connecting faces hidden within the structure, this method preserves the final look. By now, most 3D printing slicers incorporate custom support management, allowing you to add or remove supports from wherever you choose. However, there are still a few slicers out there that don't give custom support options, and instead you have to rely on just a few, like support nowhere, support only touching the build plate, or support everywhere. For these, there is a technique I don't employ often but can be handy to have in your pack pocket, and that's creating my own support structures within my design software. This does have its limitations as it can be difficult to create supports matching the complex geometry nearly as well as the algorithm of slicers can, because instead it relies on my skill or my creativity. So the general idea here is that I'm going to design a shape that supports my overhang closely, and I can either do that by creating an object that's just below it and matches the contour, or I can select this face that will support the model and offset at the same distance as my air gap so the support can be easily removed. No matter the method of 3D printing, there will always be a need to support the complex models we wish to create, and minimizing the supports necessary is a helpful strategy. I hope that these techniques help you clean up your models and optimize their geometry for this particular form of production, in the same way injection molds feature draft angles for easier part removal. There will of course be times when these techniques aren't enough and you will need to surround your part in supports, so be sure that your support settings are optimized before you commit to a 4 day 3D print. Best of luck on your creations, I'm Alec from Matterhackers, thanks for watching.
Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video on how to minimize supports and that you'll implement some of these techniques into your 3D prints. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date on all our digital manufacturing content, click subscribe. See you in the next one.